Hello everyone, welcome to Hapsaic Teachers. I'm Hafsa Malik and today we are going to discuss the very very mysterious but yet very simple percentile rank. This is a topic which I found that most students struggle with and therefore I thought I would create it here for you. I will try to simplify it as much as possible so that you may be able to solve all the questions that you encounter on this particular topic. Now please remember that this is percentile ranks in relation to psychology and how you can calculate them especially for IQ tests and so on. I will also be discussing uh, what is the mean score or a standard deviation for a particular test. Now, if you don't know concepts like these, you can go ahead and request them down in the comments below and I will be more than happy to do them for you. All right, great. Let's get started. Now, before we move on to trying to understand a percentile. <clears throat> All right, now before we can go on to understand percentile ranks, it is very important that we know what a normal probability curve is and therefore that is what we are going to focus on, right? Okay, and then we will come right back to our percentile rank. Now, this is how a normal probability curve or a bell-shaped curve is mostly shaped, right? Okay, generally we talk about the population or a sample of around 10,000 when referring to the normal probability curve, right? Okay, all right. Now, this is about Z scores. This is about standard deviations, but I'm going to try to simplify it for you as much as I can. All right, so let us think when we are calculating percentile, we actually want to know out of our 100 subjects, which will later, you know, represent maybe the 10,000 or maybe we don't want to represent the 10,000. Let's just think about for every 100 subjects. Okay, where do I stand? All right, not every 100, 100, but only every 100. Okay, so for every 100 subjects, where do I stand? What does this mean? Where do I stand? This basically means am I ahead of 80 people, 50 people, am I doing better than a lot of people? Am I doing worse than a lot of people? Let's try to understand what this is and how it is done. So for the normal probability curve for the population, we know that we have an infinity on the right and infinity on the left. It's basically asymptotic where the x-axis isn't touched by the curve, right? This is your x-axis, isn't touched by the curve. But here we are talking about the sample where we have all of our data right here. So it might be confusing for you to see how for the population it lines up to a 99.7% or something. But for the sample, we will have all 100% of the data. First, what you must keep in mind is how data is allocated by statisticians, what they believe in terms of why the curve looks like this, right? Try thinking back to your 10th grade or 9th grade math scores or English scores in your class, right? If you remember well, you'd see that most people would score around a 40 to 50 to 60. This would be most of your class, right? Okay, now please remember this later also when I try to explain to you uh, why we are, you know, keeping a certain number of people out of 100 here. So please try to understand we're perfectly or we are purely talking about frequency here. You see, a lot more people are bound to score average scores, right? Uh, when you compare them with the whole, with the whole um, population or your whole class, if you can, rem if you can remember. And a few people would get a score of 30 out of 100. A few people, if it was a class that didn't do great overall, would get a score of 70 and a very, very few people would fail and get a score of uh, 20, maybe two or three people. And then very few people, let's say if the exam was not out of, you know, 100, maybe out of 85, you know, let's say unconventional exam, very, very few people would score around 80, right? This is how the world works. If you talk about how height is distributed, if you talk about how uh, facial features are distributed, if you talk about... Um, how, you know, scores and IQ scores are distributed. This, according to statisticians, mathematicians, is what holds true. All right. That means that a majority of our sample is bound to be around the average score right at the mean. Now, in a normal probability curve where the mean and the mode 
to the frequency. The mean is the arithmetic mean and also the median which is the midpoint. All of them are going to be present at the same place, right? Absolutely. So according to statisticians, now we are not talking about the score but about the number of people that you are going to find in each of these categories okay just think of these as class intervals cis or class intervals right 40 to 50 50 to 60 this is how your math teacher grades you in fact this is how all of your teachers grade you 40 to 50 or 40 to 49 and 50 to 59 and so on right so according to statisticians the curve again is a 50 and 50 symmetrical curve right so here according to statisticians you will have 34 people within the first standard deviation. The first standard deviation I have maintained at 10 points, right? This means that the first group of people that vary from the mean will vary only as much as 10 points and therefore no matter how many people I have, every 34 people out of 100 ought to be present here in my sample, right? Okay, wonderful. And then 34 people ought to be present here. And then you see how it goes down a little, the curve, right? Every 14 out of every 100. So out of every 100, even if I have 10,000 people, out of every 114, so 1,400 probably for uh, 10,000 would come here, right? And likewise, since it is a symmetrical curve between the first and the second standard deviation, which, which just shows us at a certain rate of 10 points, right? which we are actually deviating from the mean, right? A standard deviation is basically telling you how much each score deviates from the mean and then from itself as well or from other scores as well, right? That is what we are trying to understand here. And lastly, as you can see, for every 100 people, you only have two to three people here, right? Try to make up 100. What do you have left? You have two and you have two, right? So whenever you are asked about percentile ranks, it is never asking you about particularly the score. It's not asking you to find out the score, but how many people you are ahead of, right? Again, I'm asking you guys, if you don't understand what a standard deviation is, what variance is, what a mean is, what a mode is, um, you do need to start from zero, but I'm willing to help you out start from zero. Now let's take away the 20 and the 30 and the 40 and the 50. Uh, let us replace that with IQ scores. Okay, intelligence quotient scores from Weschler's adult intelligence scale, which is highly used across all, I think, fields of psychology, right? Highly reliable, highly valid. Everything else stands, just the scores will change and then we will try to place people over one another in the sense, how many people are you ahead of? And how many people are you below, um, you know, if you get a certain score, right? Makes it makes more sense to do it on um, IQ scores, although you can do it on the scores that I showed you as well. So we know with Weschler's adult intelligence scale, the mean stance, which is a norm, um, you know, obtained from a norm or, you know, compared to a standard population or standardized on, um, you know, 4,000 adults, 2,000 adults in Canada and then US and stuff like that, right? So you have a mean of 100 and you have a standard deviation where each of these points or class intervals again and again will represent a difference of 15 points in the score and not 10. So the standard deviation simply here as in the amount with which each of, you know, the participants of the class intervals differs from each other will be 15 points. As you can see, the, the Z scores or, you know, as you can see, the standard deviations are arranged in the form of positives. The plus sign isn't mentioned here. And in terms of negatives, where basically the minus sign indicates that these scores are below the mean or the median right? They are below the norm. They are below the average because after all, our mean is our average and our mean here is 100, right? And I just go on adding 15, 15, 15 at each standard deviation now. All I have to do is keep adding 15 points at each standard deviation, which will give me a score of 115 here, will give me a score of 130 here, and will give me a score of 145 here, right? Quite simple. And then when you move on to the left side here, 
you will simply just have to subtract 15 each time you uh, cross a uh, you know, class interval or when you reach a particular standard deviation. So here I simply subtract 15 and I get 85. I subtract another 15 and I get a score of 70. I subtract another 15 and I get a score of uh, 55. Now see, you would easily be able to tell me, right? Remember the 34, remember the 14 and remember... Remember the two, right? Let's let's pick another color so that we can highlight well. So as you can see, if I were to ask you, you've got a score of 115, okay? Let's say A is a boy who studies in eighth grade. Okay, now we're talking about Weschler's adult intelligence. Yeah, almost forgot. Now A is a 30-year-old person who's got his graduation and has his master's and all of that. A is an adult. Now, A has a score of 115 on the Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale. How many people out of every 100 in his age range is he ahead of, right? All you've got to do now is add this, right? At first, what you do is you add 2 plus 14 plus 34 plus 34. What you will find is that the boy, sorry, the man, has a percentile rank of 84. This just indicates that for every 100 people in the sample or the population, wherever you're comparing, um, this person is ahead or above 84 people. Out of every 100 people, he has scored better than 83 to 84 people. That's what we're talking about. And naturally, if I were to say the score of 85, Let's say B is a person who has scored 85. Where does B stand? B actually is only about 16 people for every 100 because percentile is nothing but how many people am I ahead of out of every 100 in the sample? Please write this down if you find difficulty. Um, all right. How many people am I ahead of? out of every 100. All right, I hope I'm not covering all of the written part. Um, actually, that is about it. Once you've understood this, you will be able to do this for any score. And once you know the percentile rank, you will also be able to convert that into any score. And like I've said before, if you do not understand the Z score and how all of this is obtained, a Z score is simply a way to standardize data um, or to, you know, represent it well, right? If you do not understand those things, then please go ahead and let me know in the comments down below and I will be more than happy to help you out. Like I've told you guys before, this channel is simply my way of giving back to so many of you who would like to learn. Um, I love it when people show interest in psychology. I love it when people want to learn. So please come, please learn, give your suggestions. I'll be looking out for them. Thank you for watching today's class. Um, you can look forward to more content uh, teaching related on Thursday. I'll see you then.